Daniel Barter, more commonly known as Danny, was born on the 12th of December 1954 in Mobile, Alabama, to Paul and Maxine Barter. The Barters lived on Thrush Drive in Mobile and shared seven children together, with Danny being the third youngest. Danny was described by his mother as a sweet and pretty young boy. On the 17th of June 1959, four-year-old Danny, his parents, Paul and Maxine, and three of his brothers, Steve, Ronald and Bobby, drove about an hour from their residence in Mobile to go camping in Perdido Bay near to Lillian, Alabama. Danny's uncle and two of his cousins also joined the Barters on their summer vacation. The remaining Barter children, Teresa and Michael, went to stay with their aunt Vera in Mobile, with their eldest sister Wanda staying with their grandmother. Unbeknownst to Maxine Barter at the time of this particular camping trip, she was around a month pregnant with her eighth child, a son, Tony. Early the following morning, on June 18th, Danny and his mother, not his father as claimed in numerous sources, were sent to a nearby store to buy breakfast, some snacks and some drinks. At this point, four-year-old Daniel was dressed in only a pair of grey boxer shorts, which he had worn the previous night whilst sleeping in his uncle's car. When the duo returned from the store, Maxine prepared breakfast as Paul played with the children. At around 9.30am, Danny went to play on the sandy banks of Perdido Bay, Maxine and Paul rigging fishing poles whilst their son played nearby, a bottle of knee-high soda in his hand. Around 10 to 15 minutes later, at around 9.45am, it became apparent that Danny had wandered off. Maxine and Paul asked Danny's three brothers if they had seen him, but they hadn't. Maxine subsequently went looking for her son, but became increasingly frantic when she could not locate him. Maxine immediately ran to a nearby house to call the local authorities for help. An extensive search for young Danny Barter ensued over the following days and nights, with police, military, firemen, cadaver dogs, search teams and volunteers scouring the vicinity of Perdido Bay, but despite their best efforts, nothing was found, either on land or in any waterways, not even the soft drink bottle that four-year-old Danny was carrying when he vanished. Over 2,000 people were involved in the search for four-year-old Danny, many of whom came from Alabama and even the surrounding states. Divers searched the lake, volunteers scoured through thick brush, and helicopters searched from the skies, but nothing of significance was found. Even water holes and the bay itself were blown up with dynamite in an effort to loosen any potential human remains, but this too yielded no results. The champion bloodhounds that were brought in to help aid in the search did trace Danny's scent to a nearby road, but that was where any leads ended. The search for Danny Barter came to an end around a week after he disappeared. Authorities found no trace of the young boy, no physical evidence that could indicate where he had gone or what had happened to him. 
No body was recovered from the bay, which led authorities to conclude that Danny most likely had not gone into the water and drowned. This theory was supported by his mother, who claimed that her son was simply terrified of going near the murky waters of Perdido Bay. She was adamant that Danny would not have voluntarily gone into the lake or gone into the nearby woods of his own accord. Also, to bear in mind at this point, Danny was only wearing a pair of shorts and was barefoot when he disappeared. If he had wandered off on his own, he wouldn't have gotten far and footprints would have been found, but none ever were. It is reported that the bay itself was very swampy and was a hunting ground for alligators and snakes, though there was absolutely no evidence to suggest that Danny had been attacked by either of these animals, or any other creatures for that matter. A number of hunters managed to catch two large alligators prowling in the area, slicing open their stomachs to see if Daniel's remains were inside, but to no avail. Absolutely nothing was found during the search. It was as if Danny had simply vanished into thin air. Nobody saw a child matching his description in or around the area. He was simply gone. Something rather disturbing which then came to light was that around a month or so before four-year-old Danny disappeared, his mother Maxine saw a suspicious vehicle sitting outside the family home whilst hanging up some washing. Maxine then walked towards the car, however, when the male driver saw her, he subsequently covered his face with a newspaper before swiftly driving away. Rather chillingly, this wasn't the only sinister occurrence that happened prior to Danny's disappearance. A neighbour reported to Maxine that a short while after this particular incident, their German shepherd started barking at a mysterious man who had been peering through the bedroom window belonging to the Barter Boys at some point during the night. Danny was fast asleep in the room with his siblings at the time. The neighbour then went after their dog and inspected the area beneath the boy's bedroom window where the man had been lurking and found footprints there, but the man had fled after being scared off by the German Shepherd. Police did manage to get plaster casts made of the footprints and took photographs, but unfortunately it's unknown if this particular piece of evidence still exists. Even more disturbingly, on June 17th, the day prior to Danny's disappearance, Maxine drove to a local store with her two sons, one of them being Danny. Maxine went inside the store to fetch some groceries, whilst leaving her two sons in the car. However, during this short period of time, a strange man drove past the barter's car, simply staring at the two brothers, without saying a word, before driving away. Danny's brother Ronald informed their mother of this disturbing incident as soon as she returned from the store. Due to these numerous unsettling occurrences, Paul and Maxine believed that the family were being stalked and as a result this led to Danny being kidnapped. Unfortunately, many of the files and pieces of evidence have since either been lost or destroyed. In 2008, however, almost 50 years after his disappearance, Danny's case was reopened by the local authorities and the FBI after supposedly hearing a conversation about the case in public. No further information is known about this lead, other than authorities are almost certain that Danny was abducted, but by whom and why remains a mystery. 
At the time of his disappearance, Daniel Danny Barter was four years old. He stood at approximately three feet tall and weighed around 50 pounds. Danny is described as being of Caucasian origins, with brown hair and big brown eyes, and he also carries a number of distinguishing scars. He has scars on his fingers caused by getting them trapped in a fan as a baby and on his tongue after he accidentally fell and bit right through it. When he was last seen, Danny was wearing a grey pair of shorts and was barefoot. His DNA is available for comparison. Following their horrendous ordeal, the Barter family moved away from Alabama to Texas. Unfortunately, Danny's father, Paul, passed away in 1965 from a heart attack and his mother, Maxine, died in 1995. His younger brother, who he never met, Tony, also passed away in 1997 from cancer. Even after 62 years, Danny's remaining siblings are still searching for answers and are hopeful that one day they will find out what happened on that fateful day in June of 1959. On the 18th of June 2009, 50 years after his disappearance, the remaining Barter siblings revisited the campsite where their younger brother vanished to remember him and to rededicate their mission in finding out the truth about what happened to him. The Barter siblings all firmly believe that Danny is out there somewhere and are hoping that one day they will be reunited. 